Hello and welcome back to Lesson 11e, Preview, Reindeers and Lichens, Quantitative Reasoning Online. Okay, we did 11d on rabbits, snowshoe, hare, and lynx. We never talked about the lynx, did we? Actually, in the story, um, they found a relationship that when rabbits' populations were high, uh, there were a lot of rabbits to feed the lynx, so the lynx basically um, ate themselves out of rabbits. Rabbit population died off, which means the lynx population died off. So now the lynx, the rabbits weren't being preyed upon by the by the lynx, so then the rabbits rebound, um, as they always do. Got to build their population back up, now there's more rabbits to feed the lynx, so now the lynx population started building up. And eventually, the lynx population gets again too big for the amount of rabbits. Uh, rabbits um, got depleted. The lynx start dying off again. The rabbits not being fed. They build they build the population back up. It's a nasty prey versus predator cycle there, but um, it's it's basically two logistic curves fighting each other for resources. But that's I digress. Huh, I never do that, do I? Let's look at reindeer and lichens. One's an animal. One's a. I'm not sure what lichen is. It a fungus or um, just a very funny plant. All right. So what are you going to do here? We're going to read another article in graphs and identify key information. We'll create a table of values. From that table of values, we will create a scatter plot of the data. And then we describe the shape of the graph and the mathematical models that fit that fit the graph, the data. Nothing we haven't done before. Okay. So let's see. In the next class, you will continue to explore models like the predatory prey model and the comparison of real-world data to linear exponential logistic and cyclic models. This exploration will lead to investigation of other models. And this tutorial is for the preview of Lesson 11, Part E workbook on uh, reindeers and lichens begin here okay so question read the article what wiped out st matthew's island's reindeer right, let's pull this guy up copy new window paste and go Ooh, my alaska so let's see, what do we have here? Ooh, reindeers. Now, it said that on a small remote island in the Bering Sea, there were one time 6,000 reindeers, briefly. Okay. In what has become a classic story of wildlife boom and bust. Today, no reindeers live on the island. Three scientists looked back at the St. Matthew's reindeer herd and found that an extreme weather event probably pushed and stressed the animals to the deaths. Sad. So let's see how the story begins. In 1944, <clears throat> August, uh, Coast Guard put... So 1944, they put 29 reindeers on the island by barge. And was supposed to be used for a possible food source for 19 men in case they were cut off. Remember, 1944, war with Japan off Alaska. Uh, the, men, the men never killed a single raid, reindeer. We won the war. They pulled off the men. They left the reindeer. So here they are on an island with absolutely no predators. They're the top of the food chain. Leaving them on a 32 mile long, 4 mile wide island, rich, rich with their favorite food, the lichen. That's nice, nice to hear. Okay, so now in 1957, 13 years, they went back and they noticed their herd grew from 29 to 1300. Yeah, that was a. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, six years later, he came back and was astounded. 
six thousand animals and then 1966 three years later Joe started higher um, the herd shrunk from six thousand down to forty two of that herd, 41 were female, one was male that had abnormal antlers, and they presumed they probably couldn't reproduce. And they came back a decade or so later. Zero, zero um, reindeers. Only thing now is an Arctic fox. You can go on and read some more of it. Um, what they believe caused the issue. So 1944, 29 reindeers, 1957, 1300 reindeers, 1963, 6,000, 1966, 42. Oh, that's not supposed to happen. Hey, when that happens. Let's cheat a little bit here. No, not gonna work. All right. Complete, complete a table of values of the data points shown below. What I'm gonna do. I'm gonna collapse this guy. There we go. Blank table. So year 1944. What do we have? We had 29 reindeers. Now next data point given was 1957. When it was 1300 reindeers. Uh, next data point was 1963 with 6,000 reindeers. And three years later, 42. Because we could go later, 1976, zero, but not what they're asking for. So the answer, <clears throat> let's see what we got here. 7, 63, 66, 29, 1300, 6042. Nailed it. Part B. Plot the data points from the table. Let's do it by hand. <clears throat> So let's see. Let's have our years of, let's have year, population, and let's start with 1944, 1957. 1963 Dang this thing. And 1966. We went from Okay, that's six thousand. There's three thousand. Three thousand, two thousand, one thousand. So 1944, we had 29. That'd be down here somewhere. 1957, we had 1300. 1963. 6,000 and 1966, 42. So one could say that initially was kind of going exponential. What do we got here? Uh, yeah, pretty much said pretty good. 45, real low. 
about 1300 pops at 6000 drops like a rock a few years later to almost zero again let's not do the exponential Yeah, if I should have reindeer population, more descriptive on what kind of population we're looking at, the like population of foxes, um, hare people, and St. Matthew's location. Uh, I'll buy that. Next. So, which model would best be used to fit the population of the reindeer from 1944 to 1963? So, from 1944 to 1963. Kind of hinted earlier. Now, with this rapid rise, it looks like it was kind of acting. Uh, kind of acting exponentially. It wasn't linear. It wasn't logistic because it wasn't showing. It wasn't going up straight. It didn't follow the logistic curve. And definitely not nothing above, so it has to be B. Okay, I guess what they're trying to say is the reason they chose C also is they're making the point that maybe, maybe we're, if everything else, if it was for the weather events, we may have seen it go into a logistic curve. Uh, we're just in that portion of the of the of the growth of the growth rate. Maybe if it was for the storms and the heavy winters that. Uh, took them out, they would have leveled off to a sustain, um, max sustainable population. But it's, it's definitely exponential. Uh, from the models you chose in Part C, match the population behavior from 1963 to 19. With the models you chose in Part C, either the exponential or the logistic. Matched behavior from 63, 63 to 66. Uh, definitely not. Uh, exponential would have set, would have kept going higher, even faster. Logistic would have kept growing, but at a, at a lesser rate of increase. So the answer has to be B. No. Okay, look at the graph. The reindeer population the entire period, 1944 to 66. Does the reindeer population match any of our models, our population models? Is it possible that the data sh shown could be cyclical? I uh, recall that the reindeer in 66 were unable to re reproduce unless something changed. Um, they would be unable to cycle back up. If you'd like to read more about the reindeers, yeah, that's what it says. Let's see what it says. Wrong button. What in the heck? Yeah. Heard this stuff. Hey, uh, story in, in comic book. Let's see, let's see. 
Okay, last lichen. No one's around. Uh, no one's buying, buying, buying them. Get bigger, 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 and bigger. Even more population. Oh, then they are. Then the mass dying went up. Crash. Without way to produce many population data complete in the, by the 1980s. I think we could have put another population up there. Okay. Bottom line, was it possible? I would say yes. However, the we have them that have no reproducing pair, and you don't have a reproducing pair, you 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 would eventually go extinct. So, let's see, how confident are you that you can read an academic article? <clears throat> eh, I'm always a little somewhat conf confident. There's a lot of times you have a lot of terminology and more data than sometimes you need to look at. How confident that you can create a table? Oh, sure, I can always do a table. Create a scatter plot in the table, definitely. Describe the shape based on what we know, definitely. All right, let's see. <clears throat> read, read an academic article, got key information off it, yes. Create a table from the values, scatter plot from the data, and describe the shape. We did all that. We're good. All right. So with that, we are done with Reindeer and Lichen Interact Tutorial and I'm going to close out this one and I'll see you again shortly. So go back, look it over again for one question. So I'll see you in a little bit for the question.